Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the unboxing of the Engway M20. As you saw in the intro, this is a very capable and well-equipped e-bike. However, we've got to get this out of the way. As you notice, this thing is a dead ringer for the Super 73 Z-Series lineup of e-bikes. As you can see, they look very similar. However, I do want to point out that the similarities pretty much end at the aesthetics and the fact that they both have mechanical disc brakes. On that note, let's jump into a quick spec and price comparison, and then we'll come back, pop this thing open, slap it together, and go for a ride. Alright, welcome back. So drop a comment down below and let us know what you think about the value in the Engway M20 compared to the Super 73 uh, Z series lineup, but not just that lineup of bikes or that particular brand, but any other bikes you have experience with or you own, let us know what your thoughts are uh, compared to this bike here, which again is a fantastic value. So enough of the value part. Let's get this thing open and uh, see what's inside. Hopefully all the tools we need to put it together are inside of the box. There's only one way to find out. Let's get started. All right, so first thing to point out, the box is pretty beat up. As you can see, there's a big hole right here. There's a hole on the top. And then there's also this big hole in the bottom. I actually opened it already when I received it just to make sure everything was fine on the inside, considering how the box looks. It's currently upside down and we're just gonna open it that way. Let's go ahead and take a peek inside and see what you would see the first time you open your Enway M20. So everything is zip tied and covered with styrofoam and everything looks to be in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and lay the box down and get the bike out. Since the box is pretty much toast, I'm just gonna use a razor to flip the lid on this thing. All right, so here it is, the Engway M20. This is the single battery model. Lots of stuff to take off, lots of things to unwrap, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, we've got it all unwrapped except for the handlebars, and we're ready to put the front wheel on. Just a couple of things I wanted to highlight that I wasn't sure of before I unboxed it. There is a front fork adjustment. So at this price point, that's insane that there's actually any type of adjustment on the front fork. And yes, there is a rear suspension as well. We already knew that, but there's a shock there. It may not be great, but it is a shock and that shock can be replaced if the buyer isn't super happy with the way it feels. Also, it's got nice long crank arms. The fenders are metal, which is nice. The tail lights really, really nice looking. And I can see that the controller is mounted underneath the seat, which is a pretty good spot out of the way and you have very very heavy inspiration from the uh, super 73 z series right there let's go ahead and get the front wheel on but first let's see what's included inside of the three boxes that came with the bike all right here's everything that came in the three boxes with the bike we've got our toolkit which is always a nice touch we've got the pedals there's a two amp charger so nothing super fast but it is a charger and it'll get your bike good to go overnight we've got the dual stack headlights here which is uh again super nice touch considering the price of the bike Angway even includes a nice little tank bag that has the grooves of the top tube built into it and then over there we've got the instruction manual assembly instructions some stickers and the registration card unfortunately there is some bad news due to the condition of the box some of the front axle hardware fell out. Doesn't suck as much for you guys watching this because you're still gonna see me ride it, but I'm gonna have to wait for Engway to send me the correct hardware, which sucks. So yeah, let's get it together and see how it looks and see how it feels. Hopefully it's not too high because I am only 5'4". So something that fits a shorter rider is something that not only appeals to me, of course, but to also tons of other people. So yeah, let's go ahead and put it together and hopefully we'll get that front axle hardware soon. Here's a closer look at what we're actually missing. 
So the instructions show that you need a front axle. Maybe I have a different version of the front axle and it doesn't need the extra nut because this actually is a big bolt. Very curious to see what they send me. So essentially what I'm missing is this little torque arm and the nut for this side. Next, we're gonna tighten up everything on the handlebars. And this is a really crucial step. You wanna make sure you sit on the bike in the riding position that you'll be assuming when you ride and line everything up the way that you'll feel comfortable with. Right now, I'm just making sure my brake levers are even before I tighten them down. Make sure the shifter's tight and positioned the way you like it. Um, this feels good for me, so I'm gonna leave the shifter as is. The display's already in place. I had to adjust the uh, keypad a little bit, but let's go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, we've got everything on the handlebars lined up nice and tight and ready for us to ride. Next, we want to make sure that all of the connectors near the handlebars are connected. Here's our display connector. That's the last thing to connect here. If you notice, you don't have enough slack to plug this connector in here. You can loosen the display and slide it towards the center of the bike to give yourself some more slack, but I think I have enough room here. All right, folks, the M20 is all assembled, and I've got to say, this is one sharp-looking e-bike. Engway did a really good job with the aesthetics. The fenders look great. The mag wheels look fantastic. This double headlight stack looks really good as well. This is the single battery setup. If I had a dual battery, it would go right here on the top tube where the tank bag goes. So if you're curious about the dual battery setup, which is only $300 more, it's a W range, and that's still only $1,600. Check out Angway's site. I've got some links down below to save a little bit of extra cash. Here's the included tank bag. Just wanted to show you something really cool. You can actually fit your charger, the toolkit, and maybe a couple of other things in here. So I don't know if that was intentional or not, but kudos to Angway for including that in place of uh, a battery, which would be better, but it's pretty cool that this is included for free and it's nice and sturdy. It's waterproof. The zippers are covered. It's a hard shell. Nice touch. It's a little taller than I was expecting, but I still have both feet on the ground. And it's a very light bike, so that helps as well. I can actually feel the rear shock doing something, which is saying a lot considering that we're not even moving. So hopefully it's a decent shock and provides a nice smooth ride. Here's a look at the adjustment knobs on the front fork. Pretty much the only adjustment is on the right side here with the red knob. This allows you to control the compression clockwise all the way essentially locks the fork out and counterclockwise all the way gives you the most compression and uh, softest ride. So of course you want to do things before your first ride like make sure all the fasteners are nice and tight, inflate your tires, clean your rotors off and things like that. But also make sure to look for anything that's out of the ordinary so that you can flag that to the manufacturer right away. In this case I only noticed one thing of concern with the M20 and let me show you guys really quick what it is this throttle here it's very cool that it's a full throttle but one thing I want to point out is that it sticks it's not super smooth it doesn't snap back on its own and I've actually worked it a bit to get it to this point and it's still kind of sticking so just be aware of uh, this issue here if you get an M20 make sure that you check your throttle thoroughly and make sure that it's snappy like that before you go on your first ride because you don't want to crash because you were out of control and the reason being that your throttle was stuck. Give it quick twists, let it snap back on its own and hopefully that should, see it's stuck right there, it's stuck all the way on, that's not good. So keep an eye on that if you uh, have an M20 or you have this type of throttle, I'm going to do the same and then I'll report back if there's any issues down the line with this particular issue here. 
I've never heard of this manufacturer of brakes, but you know, if they work, they work. And I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not gonna knock the brakes. While we wait for Angway to send us the appropriate hardware, we actually ended up using the shipping axle temporarily while we wait for Angway to send us the correct axle and appropriate hardware. But I think it's safe enough to just go for a ride in the parking lot here to see how the brakes feel, see how the suspension feels over little bumps. And I'm curious to see how the motor feels with that 1000 peak watts of power. All right, folks, we've got the M20 outside and we're ready to go for a ride with you guys. But I have to be honest and make a confession. This is not going to be a first impression ride, at least not for me, because I did go out on a ride the uh, first night, as you can see here. After I did the assembly, I took it out for a spin. I wasn't happy with the footage because it got a little dark on me, so I decided to re-record it today. And I also wasn't sure if I had secured the front wheel correctly since I was missing some of the front axle hardware. And I've got to be honest, on that first ride, I was very unimpressed with the acceleration and the speed of the bike. I was basically thinking this thing is a potato. I couldn't even get it to go over 23 miles per hour, but I did realize that I hadn't charged the battery at all. And even though it was showing pretty full, it's possible that it wasn't. So I chalked it up to maybe not a fully charged battery. I wasn't gonna write it off right away. And that kind of ended up being a blessing in disguise because now it's two days later. And yesterday I was able to have uh, two of my friends who are mechanics take a look at the bike. And we realized that both of the brakes were rubbing so much so that the front wheel would pretty much stop right away when I spun it pretty hard. So we adjusted the brakes. The front rotor was also bent. So we took care of that as well. Keep that in mind. If you get the Angway M20, uh, make sure that your rotors are straight, not damaged, not bent and also make sure that you uh, adjust your brake pads if you need to, it's very easy to do so. There's tons of videos on that, so uh, check any of those out. It's a really easy process. Another thing I wanna point out, and this is not a knock on Engway because they don't produce their own motors. I did notice a gap in the motor along the cover plate, as you can see here. At first I was thinking this is probably an alignment pin or something like that that got crushed during assembly. My friend suggested taking the screws out and yes, they were literally Phillips screws, not even bolts. And I did replace those with some M3 bolts just to get that plate on there securely. But yeah, once we got the plate off, as you can see, it was literally the tip of a tiny screwdriver that had broken off and got wedged in between the motor housing and the motor plate. And it got tightened that way. And thankfully we caught it because it easily could have allowed water and condensation to get into my motor and cause premature wear and damage. So definitely um, check your bike over thoroughly when you get a bike, not just this bike, but any e-bike, any bike period, anything new, when you get it, check it over, make sure everything's good to go. As you can see that first night when I got on the bike, it felt pretty tall for me. I was on my tippy toes and that is something that I'm used to, but I am looking forward to a bike where I can plant my feet on the ground firmly and always feel confident if I have to dismount in any direction. Come here. You gotta be nice to people. Come on. You gotta be nice. So the bike felt a little tall for me. I'm only 5'4". Again, my friends came through and they adjusted my front fork. So they basically slid the fork up, making the front of the bike lower. And now I can be on the bike comfortably. My feet are flat on the ground. I can tap them and I feel very confident in any direction. So that's something you can do on any e-bike. You know, just keep that in mind if you wanna lower your bike just a bit because you don't feel confident not being able to keep your feet on the ground. You can always adjust your front fork, loosen your crowns, and then you can slide them up, make sure they're even, make sure nothing's hitting down here. Make sure when you compress the fork that your headlight's not gonna hit the fender, nothing's gonna hit. And uh, yeah, you can make your bike a lot more comfortable for yourself, so. Let's go for that first spin now. I'm really excited to see Rusty. All right, so enough of that. Let's hop on the bike, see how it rides. I'm really excited to see how it feels, how the acceleration is now that we've got the brake centered and the battery is fully charged. So yeah, let's hop on. All right, let's hop on. I'm excited. To turn it on, press and hold the top button. I also wanna point out when you turn it on, it's automatically in pedal assist zero. There's no throttle in pedal assist zero. The higher you go up in pedal assist, the faster your throttle is. So your pedal assist is connected to the power of your throttle. Just keep that in mind. We'll save the speed increments for every pedal assist level for the review. Right now, we just want to see how it accelerates, how the brakes feel, how the suspension feels, and uh, if it's a fun bike, because overall, that's all that matters is if it's fun and you're gonna have fun commuting on it, riding with your friends, and that's all that matters. So uh, let's see how it goes. Rusty, ready? Okay. This is so different from the first night. 
I don't know if it's the battery or the brakes aren't rubbing anymore. It's probably both. The suspension feels pretty good right there. But yeah, this is peppy, man. It's no uh, X48 and I hate to compare to another brand. That's the only really 48 volt bike that I ever owned and that I got used to. But that was more expensive and you know, for the same price, actually for $200 less than that bike was, you can get this bike with uh, two batteries, 26 amp hours. And I think that gives you an estimated like 100 miles of range if you're in pedal assist one, but who wants to ride in pedal assist one when you can just throttle it and have some fun. And it feels so good with these front forks lowered or raised, however the terminology is. I don't know what the terminology is, but the bike is lower for me. It feels really, really comfortable. And uh, yeah, this thing is fun. Let's see how the brakes feel here. That's not too bad. From full speed, it'll get you to a stop pretty safely, considering this only hits 28 miles an hour. These brakes are totally fine. Hey, Rusty, what you doing, buddy? Follow me, come on, come on, come on. With daddy. He's like, nah, that thing's too fast, dad. Yeah, let's take it on the street and see what the top speed is. Man, I'm so glad this thing didn't end up being a potato. This thing is zippy. It feels just like the Super 73Z Miami that we rode last year at the Electrify Expo. This is rated a bit higher. That motor is 600 watts. Uh, this is 750 watt nominal, 1000 peak. But they both feel about the same and that's not saying a bad thing about either. They're both nice and punchy for the price. But this is significantly cheaper. Keep that in mind. So I've got Rusty's camera aimed right at the rear shock so you guys can see that thing in action. Let's go over some of these uh, little bumps in the road here. See if that does anything for the rear shock. But if not, I've got a little bump coming up here. And there's a nice little jump in the sidewalk coming up as well. But let's see uh, how the brakes feel from 20 plus miles an hour. That's pretty damn good. Acceleration is, you know, nothing to write home about, but somebody that's new to e-bikes, inexperienced, doesn't need or want to go super fast. This is a perfect bike. You can snag these things for like 1100 bucks at times. Um, I'm working on a discount code right now. If I have one, you'll see it on the screen right now and it'll be down in the description. Let's make a little U-turn here and see how fast we can get the top speed. But yeah, the suspension feels great. Uh, lowering the front fork for myself just makes it feel really dialed in. So I love the uh, option to do that on e-bikes or any bike. So cruising, hitting uh, 25. Feel like I'm going into the wind, but I don't know. Hopefully after some uh, battery cycling, I've only done one 12 hour charge and it wasn't even 12 hours. Rule of thumb is to do three of those and then that conditions your battery. So I have not done that, but um, I was hoping to see a little more than 25 miles an hour. Yeah, it's holding 25, but it's not really going past that. But that's cool. We will see uh, if the speed changes on our review, because we do have the review coming up. This is just the uh, first impression ride, keep that in mind. So we're not going to go too far into details. Let's see how the suspension goes here. I didn't have to lift my butt off the seat, so that's a plus. So there's a nice little jump coming up in the sidewalk to my right here. So I'm going to go up here and make a right. Yeah, it's like once it hits 25, it's uh, dialing back. Right, hopefully my cameras don't fall off on this jump because it's possible. This thing is so nimble. All right, Velcro strap, zip tie, please, please hold my 360 camera. The one behind me is barely holding on. Woo. I lifted my butt up that time. Hey, let's switch this uh, 360 camera to the front so you guys can see what the uh, headlights look like.
Oh. My kickstand extended itself. <laughs> I wasn't able to deploy the kickstand properly. Okay, we'll just sit on it. All right, so this is the Angway M20 from the uh, front view. Headlights are really nice and bright and it does have daytime running lights. So you can see if I turn the headlights off, we still got some DRLs going on. So that's a nice touch. Very, very impressed with this bike. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think uh, about the M20, uh, your thoughts on the value and the price, um, how it compares to something that you have. And uh, my final thought on this bike, you know, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody that's already used to going over 30 miles per hour on an e-bike. But if you have somebody that's uh, like a child that's old enough to ride with you now, or, you know, a friend that's looking to get into e-bikes, but they don't want to go or need to go super fast, or they're just inexperienced, like this is the perfect bike for that. Super safe with the, the stock horn, the double headlights, the nice bright tail light. It's nice and big. Uh, the dual suspension is nice, super easy to swap out if you feel the need to do so. And another nice touch is that the frame is just really, really nice. So if and when you outgrow the speed of this bike, new fork, new shocks, new brakes, upgrade the powertrain and you've got yourself a little speed demon that uh, looks nice, is nice and sharp, cool color. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If I have a code, it'll be down in the description. Uh, so use that if you want to buy any Angway e-bike. Um, that'll help us out and hook Rusty up with some uh, really nice snacks and treats. So yeah, keep an eye out for the review. Keep an eye out for the uh, range test that we'll do on this bike. Love you guys. Love you gals. As always, hang loose, ride safe, and be nice to each other. Peace. Actually, screw that. Let's give this another shot, man. As you can see, I've got a passenger with me now. And we're going to see if we can hit the uh, 28 miles per hour. Uh, it slipped my mind that I had inflated the tires to 15 PSI when I assembled the bike and not 20, which is the max. So we're just going to see if we can hit the uh, 28 that's advertised as the top speed. 23, 25. This is slightly uphillish here. So we're going to go up here and turn around. But uh, it's still hitting 25, which is what we were seeing yesterday. And I definitely did add another 5 PSI, so I'm surprised that we're not seeing maybe another mile per hour or two tick on there. But uh, let's go this way and see. Pedal assist on this bike is really weird. I want to say that now, like it kicks in after like five seconds, maybe even more. So, all right, we're hitting 26 now. Back to 25. So, I don't know. We shall see after a couple more charging cycles if this thing's able to hit the advertised 28 miles per hour. Rusty and I, we definitely are not heavy by any stretch. I think combined, maybe we're 160 pounds, probably less. So, this thing should be able to hit the top speed um, i've only seen up to 26 it's on 26 now but uh it's still fun super zippy and yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video we gave it another shot still hit the same top speed which isn't necessarily a bad thing again i think this is aimed more for entry level or inexperienced riders that want to have fun and hit up the group ride and they don't have anything and don't want to spend too much this is perfect for that so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it and this time for real peace